can't believe it's finally snowed. I've got the stove out. I'm gonna throw the lavoo up. Let's go hot tent in. cold out here, definitely fresh. I've just cleared this area because I'm actually going to be camping with a hot tent tonight. I've got the Lavoo. I'm actually going to be using the Rough Timber Tri-P piece, which is a 3D printed top cap so I can use it without a center pull, which is amazing. So I've just got to go and harvest three long bits of timber, 1.8 meters long. And for that, I've got a little bit of string, which has got a knot of 1.8 meters. And it also, it's got a full length of two meters just so I know where to space the legs. So I've got this bit of cord which has got a knot and a loop here at 1.8 meters and then the full length is two meters that allows me to choose my poles and space them apart. Definitely need a hood on while you do that. <laughs> I'm cutting these a bit high and then I'll get them low. Just because I don't need this extra thick bit. So those three poles are cut to 1.8 meters. Now I've just got to whittle the top to fit in here.
Oh, so now the Levu's up, really starting to feel like home. Just got to get the fire going and also the stove because I'm actually going to be doing a hot tent tonight. It's going to get really chilly, probably about minus four to minus six, maybe even lower. But it's a good time for me to use for the first or second time really because I have tested it just to be safe. But my chimney baffle for my Pomoly T1 fast fold stove, obviously that's a titanium stove and this is a stainless steel baffle. Some of you might recognize this as a utensil holder from Ikea. And I'll bring the camera in closer or I'll come closer to you and I'll show you exactly what I've done. But it just means you can be a bit more sound of mind when you're in your Levu at night knowing that your chimney is not burning your fabric. So it just acts as a twin wall and goes in the arm sleeve and protects it from the chimney. So here we are, here's the base basis of it. It's a utensil holder, like I said. And it's got a hole cut out of the middle, which is 60 millimeters or six centimeters. I've then put some M6 bolts all the way through. These are 40 millimeters. And I've put three nuts or two nuts on this side, on the outside to space it correctly. And one nut on the inside to hold it. And it creates this triangle, which then again protects the pipe. So I'll show you that in action. Let's get going. So you can see the IKEA utensil baffle that I've made works really, really well. It just keeps the pipe away from this fabric. It just sits really nicely in the armhole. So really worthwhile getting that done, guys. So it looks good and inviting in there, guys. It's a little bit dark, obviously. But you can just see the stove glowing away there. What a beautiful setting. So one thing I do have with me is actually a carbon monoxide detector really really important that you carry one of these when you're hot tenting um, because it's too easy for something to go wrong so I'm going to put this together excuse the loud noise that is on now as you can see that tells me parts per million has a really loud beep so that will wake me up if my uh, chimney fails and I start to get smoked out carbon monoxide poisoning is not the one Obviously it's a silent killer as well, so it could be happening without any smoke. So it's best to stay safe. I'm going to put this on top of my bag once I get the Levu all set out, which I'm going to do now, and then I'm going to get the fire going because it's uh, going to get dark very soon. It doesn't take long when you're out here. And yeah, time to get it prepared for the night.
So now that that fire is going, I'm just going to save all the smaller bits of kindling. I'm going to go collect some more and let's get the stove going just so that's ready and roaring and I can spend the rest of the day and the evening as it starts to draw in just collecting firewood basically stocking up for the night and then we can get cooking I've got some venison sausages and venison burgers to cook probably burgers tonight and I actually shot that deer a fallow a few weeks ago the video will be coming out very soon so it's a really special night to be eating something that's basically from this very ground So sorry about that guys, I think I accidentally pressed stop recording when I was uh, lighting the fire in the stove but I just used birch bark the same way I did with the fire and of course you can just move a burning ember from the fire into the log burner and use that to start your fire, just then put some dry kindling on top, shut the door and let the drawer just uh, feed that. But it's so nice to be out, absolute winter wonderland really nice surprise i was going to come out anyway and have a little session in the hot stove and really put the baffle through its paces but it's so nice to be out in the snow something i've wanted to do for ages so i'm getting quite hungry i'm just going to set up my kit now i've got the alton goods sleeping pad really excited to use that it's got a good r value so i'll be nice and warm i've got my corinthia defense 4 sleeping bag again i'll be nice and toasty and I've got the stove, so even more toasty, it's going to be brilliant. I've got some homemade venison sausages, homemade venison burgers, which I'll be having tonight. Can't wait to get them on the frying pan. And yeah, it's going to be really nice. So I've got this Alton sleeping pad, which is from Australia. It's got a Thermarest inner. The technology that they use to give them their R value. It's the first time I've used this, so hoping it would be really, really good and cozy in here. Just gonna inflate that with the flex tail. There we have it guys, the Alton sleeping bag. Feels really nice, good and thick. It's 38 mil I believe. That's gonna be good and cozy. Just got the sheepskin out. It's getting a little bit dark, so you're probably struggling to see, so I'll get the light on in a second. But both fires are going beautifully. The stove is roaring away. That's really comfy, that. She got this nice Thermarest pillow. Shout out to Craig and El Archer. East Anglian Bushcraft, obviously, being Craig. These are amazing. Thermarest made of recycled foam, really soft and it lofts up nicely. 
doesn't pack down the smallest, but it's a bit of comfort. And if I'm hot tenting, it's all about comfort. Let's see what that feels like. Oh, that's amazing. Good and warm off of that. Oh, beautiful. Can't wait. My head's a little bit close to the edge there, so I might just trim me over a tiny bit. But I don't want to be too close to that stove, you see? Perfect. I've got this little hook in the top little piece that's made obviously by rough timber. Really gives you so much space in this lavu. And means that you can be nice and comfy. Log stove, sleeping bag. My bag and stuff will be probably down by my feet or just here by the door. And it'll give me somewhere to start cooking. But I need to get a bit more wood on there now because it's looking a bit dull. So I've just put a little lantern inside the lavu, which means I can obviously see. And it's burning away beautifully. That stove pumping out some heat. So I'll probably shut the door, turn off the light and just start getting ready for food. It's about time I got the fire built up as well. It's looking a little bit sad. I'm just gonna get it roaring, get some big bits on there. Just a few big bits so I can keep some heat in that and I don't have to do as much work. And then we can start preparing for food in the next hour. So it's been a little while since I've been out and it's actually really nice to come out and do a little solo trip. Just get back to basics, big advocate of it. It's been a little while because I've been busy with work, trying to wrap up before this, the cold weather comes in and then loads of other things just have been taking up my time. I've had loads of editing to do, loads of those trips in Scotland, the overlanding ones, the hunting, they took quite a long time. So it's good to get those finally done and get back out here. I've got a few more trips, like I said, the fallow stalk. I've got one camp with a few mates as well. So they'll be coming out soon, but I thought it was just an ample opportunity to come outside and enjoy. But enough said, I've got to go get some firewood. The Muntjac calling. Oh, it's nice in here. It's not roasting yet because the stove's just about kind of settling in. Getting some good flames, but it's just about getting a good bed of coals all the way and then I can start putting bigger pieces on. But yeah, it's definitely kicking out some heat and very soon enough to cook on. I've actually been using some new boots. These are Grease Sport Game Keepers. Um, my lowers started just leaking. They weren't very waterproof on my last stalk. I got really wet feet. So these are amazing. They've got Vibram soles, full leather, and they're really comfy. I haven't got wet at all today or cold. So uh, yeah, thanks for the recommendations on those to all the people in the Field Sports UK group. So it's pretty cold outside, guys. I've uh, been fairly busy. Just getting a load of firewood ready and break it into accessible bits. I have got a soldering mat underneath my stove, which should protect the ground. Got a good amount of logs there, which if I stay frequent on topping them up, should mean the fire shouldn't go out. And of course, if it does, I could just use some of this lovely dry wood next to it. That would be getting even drier from the fire to start it up again. It's about time to stick another few bits in there. Keep that bed of embers getting strong. Yeah, it's pretty dark outside now. It's only about five o'clock. So it'll probably be an early night for me. But I just remembered <laughs> that I put those beers next to that tree. They're gonna be so cold, I'm gonna run and grab one. This stove is not cold. <laughs> so 
So here we are guys, you have to hold it upside down, it's a Beaver Town Critical Mass, it's a session IPA but it's gluten free, they're on offer for a pound, I think because the label's upside down, yeah, let's go, cheers to a first hot tent camp in snow, first ever. So yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, thank you ever so much for coming and watching. Hope you enjoyed the beginning of this video. I didn't talk loads, just because it was so cold and I wanted to get on. I wanted to get busy putting the shelter up, getting nice and warm. I knew I had a lot of firewood to collect. And I think I've done quite well. That should keep me going. And if I do need to get any more, there's plenty of logs that I've dragged near a camp that I can break up. But it's a case of keeping this going, which is the main battle. There's a good bed of embers in there and obviously of the wood I'm putting in there it has got a little bit of frost and snow on there so it is introducing a little bit of moisture so it doesn't go straight and instantly and I haven't had the time to go out and find some bigger logs to split but that's not a problem I like using deadfall there's plenty of it a lot of dead standing as well which is what I've been going in between the coppices looking for so a bit like this for example was stood up I know there's not been a lot of moisture getting in from the sides because obviously the surface area from the top is much smaller. So I kick off the snow, grab the branch, bring it back to camp and then I snap them into probably about 10 inch bits which will fit nicely in my stove and I can just every half an hour chuck one or two of these in and it should keep me going. I'm just going to relax now, shut up this door get some heat in here really really enjoying today it's lovely and these boots have been treating me well but as you probably heard there my stomach's starting to talk to me so I'll probably get the Dubai frying pan out get the venison burgers tonight got Mexicana cheese it's gonna be lovely cheers guys really nice and cozy in here got my sheepskin here keeping me nice and warm when my feet they're just off my mat and on the ground. I've actually got a little treat my dad gave me. Thank you ever so much, Dad. Fruit and nut chocolate. Can't beat a bit of fruit and nut. <laughs> Some people aren't a fan. I'm not sure, is that the raisin or is that the nut? Or is it just the combo of two? Mm. Nice and toasty in here. Ooh. Feels like I'm at home. I guess I am home from home. <laughs> Got the flex tail gear little pump, which acts as a little portable charger and a lantern. And it's giving the best light for this Lavu. It is absolutely perfect. I mean, look at that. <laughs> what a little view. Got some logs all ready to go. The stove kicking over. So nice and warm in here. I've got all of my kit there, got my bread buns for my burgers, got my beer, I've got you guys, and I couldn't be having a better time. The fire outside's ticking away nicely. Like I said, I've got a few more logs to put on, but I don't need it massive, it's just something for when I do go and open the door. It's a little bit of light. So it is time to cook, and cook I will. So I've got my little Dubai pan here, just gonna open this to get the flames roaring a little bit. We'll get my food bag out. We'll show you what we've got for the night. And tomorrow, what have I got in my goodie bag? Got some Mexicana sliced chili cheese. We've got some Borsek. Or boxek, Polish bacon. And I've got some homemade venison sausages in there and homemade venison burgers. Two of them, only thin, but good and wide. So that's what I'm going to cook first. I'm just going to grab out of here a tiny bit of oil just for the burgers. Don't need much. 
I've also got my little seasoning kit, salt, pepper, all of the good bits. So I've got two amazing bread buns here from the bakers. We're just gonna cut into these. I'm using the Feared Woods Evo Pro. I got this made by Josh from Feared Woods. Beautiful, beautiful knife and York knife, Luke, really kindly engraved my logo on there. So this is the first time it's out on a trip. You can see just how sharp it is. So like I said, I made these from a fallow deer that I harvested probably about a month ago now. I'm gonna start off with a thin one. And these wax discs can just get thrown inside, which is the beauty of a stove. So these are 100% venison burgers. This is only a thin slider, more like a smash burger. But it's going to be beautifully tasty. I'm just going to ramp up the flames a tiny bit by opening up the back vent and get another bit of timber in there. That's cooking brilliantly. This is one of the benefits of a stove, obviously, guys. Not only does it keep you really warm, but it allows you to cook amazing meals. Gonna put some cheese on this one now, just so it starts to melt on top. So that burger's done, I'm going to plonk that onto there. I can get the other one started. And there we have it guys, one venison burger, homemade with pure fallow deer harvested about a month ago. Mexicana chili cheese. Oh, I cannot wait. Mm. The funny thing is, I didn't even season this. <laughs> Which says it all. Obviously, the Mexicana cheese, the chili cheese, adding in a little kick there but it's just beautiful this other one's a little bit bigger so I'm looking forward to that so that is done go straight onto this burger bun in fact I almost forgot no, I'm glad I didn't because this is a nice little treat <laughs> I've got this little bourbon barbecue. It comes with a little carabiner, some little bottle. And it's from Reasons to Season. Uh, they were at a local little Christmas market. You can drizzle some of that on there. I can put that back in my bag. Really handy for camping. That's why I picked them up. There's a whole selection of about five. Oh, let's dig in. I'm so toasty right now. I'm going to shut that vent a little bit. Off. Oh. <laughs> wow. If you want to see a video on how to make these burgers, let me know. It's really simple. 
Oh. You would not think it's minus five outside and covered in snow. It's really cozy in here. A venison burger was absolutely amazing, but I was rudely interrupted by a tiny little ember here. So unfortunately, burnt a little tiny little hole through there and actually a little bit of the sleeve um, outside flap has burnt away. Oh, that goes to serve as a little warning <laughs> to anyone. That's why you definitely want to use a baffle of some sort. I've seen a lot of people using sticks to hold the opening up and it's uh, yeah, not good because if you knock that stick and it touches the pipe, you're in for a bit of a nightmare. You don't want that going at night. And I'm going to be extra vigilant to make sure that I probably won't have the stove going all, all night. I'll probably keep it nice and warm in here, get it really toasty in here before I go to bed. Get a good bit of bed of embers in there. And then in the morning, I can just start it with all that finer kindling that I've got put aside. And uh, yeah, get it back roasting. I might put a log on if I wake up and I'm chilly. I can get it going again with the bed of coals. But apart from that, I think that's good enough. I mean, it's so toasty in here and with my sleeping bag, it's good down to the minus figures anyway, minus 15, so I should be perfect in here. And it's so, so toasty. So I've actually now put a stick in the armhole to spread it as well, which is probably what I should have done anyway. But it's not too big of a hole, which I'm not too worried about. And I can get that stitched up, like I said. But it's a lesson to be learnt, and I'm just glad that the actual stove jack baffle does work. See so the fire outside's doing really well. I just keep pushing in these long ends, but that's my supply about done. I've only got a few more bits inside, so I've just stoked this up, and I'm going to go have a little look for some more. It's pretty dark, so I've got head torch. So there's a perfect bit of dead standing I can see already guys. Some ash which burns really well. So a little tap. Get all that snow off. And snap. Perfect. A branch standing in a tree. Perfect. Stuff like that, even though it's got a bit of snow, the rest is bone dry, which is ideal obviously. There's this bit here as well. There we are, three nice pieces. So I've got this bundle now and that should keep me going for the rest of the night. So that's basically me done for the night guys. I'm just going to crack this last beer. It's been really nice. This is just starting to get going again. I've obviously been to collect some firewood and in that time it died down a tiny little bit. But I'll just use my bellows to blow that back before sleep. <sighs> Cheers again. Thanks for joining me out here.
it's been nice to catch up, have a bit of time to myself and just relax. It's been full on lately. It's good to get back to a more regular schedule with YouTube, upload for you guys. That's why I wanted to do a relevant current day post rather than retrospective episodes, which will be a few coming, like I said, but we'll get onto that another day. I'm gonna sync this, and then I'll probably lights out. So I'll see you soon. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's cold out here. Chilly. Just get a few more little bits of kindling. Need all this dry material for the morning. Otherwise it's gonna be a pain to get that log burning and going, I know it is. It's hard getting them going. Especially when they're cold. Let's have a little look. way to get things down, pull the clematis, and all the six come down. <laughs> should be nice and toasty. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Beautiful. Put these bits of stuff down there and I've snapped them. So we've got a really good bed of coals in there now. We're gonna drag a few of these to the front, put this big log in, chuck this here, and that should see me through quite a while of the night anyway, until I'm fast asleep. In fact, the only bit of perspiration that is on me is misting off. I don't know if you can see that steaming up says something about how warm it is in here. So I've just put my trousers in the bottom of the sleeping bag to keep them nice, dry and warm. I've had such a good evening. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Oh, it's been great. <laughs> Can't beat it, this is so warm. Really toasty, doesn't feel like it's snowing outside or has been snowing outside. But enough about that, I'll see you in the morning. The stove is absolutely roasting. It's about 3 a.m. Woke up at about 2 and I got the fire going. I've just been laying here listening to it and feeling the warmth because it was quite cold. It's absolutely roaring now. So cozy. Good morning. It is fairly chilly. Just gonna get the fire going. And uh, yeah, that munchak's barking away. <laughs> Definitely won't wake me up. heat in here hopefully so I'm so impressed with that stove last night it kept me really really warm obviously this morning when it was out it was cold very cold not as cold as it is outside I can bet but um, yeah nice and quick to get going The fire burnt down nicely. Good morning, guys. Stove is going really nicely in the background there. Chugging away smoke. <laughs> Looks really awesome. But it's really cold this morning. Whoa. 
you probably hear the ground is completely frozen, all that snow. It's uh, mad. It hasn't melted a bit. This feels amazing. I'm going to cook up some breakfast in a second. Then I'm going to get going, start packing up, get the stove all packed down, Lavu all packed down, pack my gear and hike out. Oh, it's been so nice. Really, really good and fresh. There was a lot of munt jack last night barking away. And uh, at one point I actually woke up and I had this thought that the branch was about to fall on me, a widow maker, but I know I checked those. So uh, <laughs> it was just bits of snow falling from the tree, but it's quite funny. Oh, it's cold out there. Definitely freezing out there. So glad I got this stove. All my water as well didn't freeze. So that says something about just how well this warm kept me insulated and dry in here. Nice and warm and dry. Oh, oh let's get some more log on. So there's still a little bit of oil in there from last night. So there we have it guys, two homemade venison sausages. So these are venison and pork sausages. They've been seasoned with black pepper, sage, white pepper, salt, um, a few other bits and pieces which I'll put in a video very soon. So the reason I actually went for venison and pork sausages when I made these is just because venison's a very lean meat. Very good protein source obviously, but they don't have much fat on the animal. <sighs> but these smell absolutely amazing. Oh. Oh, 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 this looks amazing. Mm. Let's go. Homemade venison sausage. That shouldn't be allowed. Oh, that's so good. Especially with that sauce. Perfect. So, it would be rude to have brought it and not to use it. I've got something that I'm, I drink occasionally, hot drink. It's hot chocolate. My Sweet Peggy's hot chocolate from the State Detective. Now, of course, if you use the code WODESMAN20 from our podcast, you can get a discount on his products. So definitely please go out and listen to the podcast anyway. The WODESMAN is available on Spotify and all of that, but also, you get little things like that, little discount codes for stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna tear into this hot chocolate. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that smells good. And we're gonna get out the Tokes billy can or cup. <clears throat> and I actually had to make the handle out of a wall tie um, because I lost mine, so. Yeah, that's the only bit now that's stainless. But I'm gonna fill this up with some water and uh, yeah, get a hot chocolate on just before this fire completely dies down. Look at this incredible hot chocolate. It's like made of actual chocolate. It's like ground up Belgian chocolate, I think. It is insane. Straight in. Let's give it a taste. I'm not a hot drink man. So I'm gonna probably burn myself here. <laughs> Might have to let that cool down. I want to taste some. I have to have a spoonful. 
Mmm. Oh, that's good. Tell you what, it'd be better with milk, I can tell that already. Oh, it's the first time actually this morning that I felt cold enough to put my down jacket on underneath. This is a really good mid layer. It's just been packed away in case I needed it. And I feel like right now I could do with it. This is the Hardland jacket that they sent me last year. And I've actually been using it loads this season, giving it a real good test so far. And I have to say, I am really, really impressed. I do have a Rab jacket and I love my Rab jacket. I burnt the sleeve by accident, so I've got to send that off for repair. But this is just as good. I mean, it keeps me so, so warm. It fits under any other layer. And of course, the sheepskin's doing the same. It's insulating me by trapping that air and that's how it works. And it's a good time to sit and finish this hot chocolate. <laughs> Warm up the body. I've just packed up the sleeping bag. I've just got to deflate the air mat. The stove's almost all burnt to ash. That's the beauty of burning stuff like hazel and birch. It goes to quite powdery ash quite quickly. The coals don't last for ages. Yeah, what a lovely camp. Thanks so much for joining me. And get yourself some Peggy's, my sweet Peggy's hot chocolate. Although I would say, definitely milk or milk powder. Um, just because it's separating a little bit, but it still tastes bloody amazing. So the air mat as well from Alton Goods. Seriously impressive. Really, really nice. Kept me nice and warm. And yeah, very, very happy with it. Keeping bags in the bottom of the bag now. It's always a bit of a struggle because it is a very tight fit. But nevertheless, it does fit in there. I've actually added this bag onto the front. It's a Molly pouch and it's a single compartment. And I just keep all my kind of filming gear in there. Day fryer's pouch with my little neck knife and survival kit. And it's just something nice. That means I don't have to use the pockets or keep stuff in the main compartment of the bag. You can see all the logs burnt down to just ash and a few coals. So I almost forgot to show you the damage guys. I think that just folded over and touched so the corner caught and it traveled up to this part here and it actually started to ember a tiny little hole in the actual lavoo, which is a shame, but I can repair this I'm not too worried and it's just a lesson to be learnt and it reinforces why you do need a stove baffle. Well you can see just how cold it got last night even the inside of my lavoo at the bottom is frozen solid. Yeah. Really cold, I think it got to about minus eight out here. It's about minus six right now. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Can't believe it's the UK. Well the rough timber tripe worked an absolute treat. It was beautiful. Go check them out. Really great bits of 3D printed gear. Perfect for the Lavoo. Gets rid of that centre pole. I'm going to store these three staves in case I come back here next time. I'll put them somewhere I know. Well, that's about me done for the trip now, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon.